So the next example we're looking at is similar to the first one. Um, so we're going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to break it down into components and do it algebraically. So we got vector P for the plane and vector W for the wind. So I'm going to draw each vector kind of in its own axis. So the plane uh, vector P is flying at a speed of 400 miles per hour. So that's our magnitude. And that's going to be west, 50 degrees west of north. So I don't know, something like this, where this angle is 50 degrees. Now keep in mind that pure like trig angle that we're going to want to use when we convert to components is really going to be 90 plus 50. So we're going to want to use the 140 as our theta in our conversion equation. And the magnitude is 400 miles per hour. So we're going to try to find, I like the white for this, we're going to find those components of that vector. All right, so the x is going to be equal to uh, our magnitude times cosine of 140. And the y is going to be equal to our magnitude times the sine of 140. All right, so you should pause the video and calculate. Okay, so I got negative 306.42, and the y was 257.12. So our vector for our plane is negative 306.42 and 257.12. Now we're going to do our vector for the wind. Uh, the wind is blowing 30 miles per hour uh, on a bearing of 25 east of north, 25 degrees east of north, and it's kind of shorter, so we've got... 25 miles per hour and then this angle is what did we say it was 25 degrees so keep in mind that means our theta that we're going to use in our formulas is 90 minus 25 so it's going to be 65 degrees uh, and so we want to find our x and y components I'm not going to draw over the top of this so x is going to be equal to our magnitude times cosine of 65 degrees. Y is going to be equal to the magnitude times sine of 65 degrees. Okay, you can pause the video here and see if you agree. Okay, so I'm getting for an X value, uh, 10 point, or X component, 10.57, and for a Y, 22.66. So this vector is going to be 10.57 and 22.66. That's our wind vector. So we want the resultant vector. Um, so that's going to be just adding, uh, find the resultant vector, yeah. So we're going to add those two together. So we're going to do P plus W. So the result uh, will be at our X components, at our Y components. That's a different color. Uh, so 10.57 plus negative 306.42 we got negative 295.85 and then the y's are going to be 257.12 plus 22.66 279.78 that's our resultant vector uh, find the magnitude of the resultant vector. That's also going to be the ground speed of the plane. So, again, that's that shadow moving on the ground of the plane. Uh, how fast is the plane actually moving relative to the ground? So, our magnitude of this thing is going to be the square root of negative 295.85 squared plus uh, 279.78 squared. Uh, so, you can pause the video here, calculate that, and we'll see if we agree. So I'm getting about 407.19 miles per hour, pH. All right, find the bearing the plane is traveling as a result of the effect on wind. So that's going to be the inverse tangent of the y over the x, so 279.78 over negative 295.85. And remember, that's going to give me an answer in quadrant 4 uh, in we know that it should not be in quadrant four. It should be in quadrant one. 
Um, uh, maybe two. We'll see. We'll, we'll look at it when we're done here. Um, so let's inverse tangent that. You can pause the video and see if you agree. So I got a negative 43.4 degrees, and that's in quadrant four, but we know that we're supposed to be in quadrant two because this is a massive magnitude 400 compared to this magnitude of 25. So 400 versus 25, yeah, it blows us back a little bit this way, but not much. So our resultant vector would kind of end up up here in quadrant uh, two. And so we have to just add 180 degrees onto that. That's our little trick with inverse tangent. So plus 180 equals 136.6 degrees would be our direction angle. If you wanted to do the whole like north, west of north, so here's our north, 136, um, you know, is like somewhere up here. So then it would be, um, we would have to figure out how many degrees of north that is. So I can go 136 minus the 90. So I can call it 46, that would be 46.6 degrees west of north if you want, but I'm okay with just the direction angle in pure mathematics form. All right, let's look at our last example. This is about forces with inclined plane. So there's a skier being pulled up a slope. So here's the skier, and they're holding on to that, that lift, and it's the one where it's kind of pulling them as they hold on. All right? Um, F sub 1, so that force will be the vertical force due to gravity, which is really the weight of the skier. So we'll draw that down this way. That's F sub 1. All right? That's F sub 1. And then F sub 2 represents the force of the skier pushing against the side of the mountain at an angle of... 32. I'm going to draw this over here. F sub 1. Well, that's a different color. So that force 2 is going to be always drawn. It's like the normal. It's called normal force. It's perpendicular. Perpendicular to the slope, okay? Um, so that's our force 2. That's kind of the skier pushing off the hill and the, and the hill or the slope pushing back. Um, it says, find the magnitude of force 3 required to pull the skier up the mountain. So force 3 is like that guy. And if we draw it down here, it's parallel. If I move it down here, that's force 3. So it's going to be perpendicular here by some ge geometry properties. I'm not going to kind of go through that with you. Um, but this is the triangle we're always going to have to draw on these problems. So the normal one, the one that's perpendicular to the slope, the one that's parallel to the slope, so that means those are going to be perpendicular, and then the one that's straight down vertical. So that force one, they tell us his weight, the skier's weight is, um, uh, what was it, one, sorry, it's back up here. My iPad just froze. I can draw, but I can't move it. Oh, there we go, now we're good. 45 pounds. Uh, so this guy's 45. Is crazy. Is he weighing 45 pounds? Did I miss? Oh, it's 145. Okay, 145 pounds. We're looking for this missing. That would be the magnitude of the force that's going parallel with the slope. That would be what's needed to pull him up the hill. Uh, so we can do this with trigonometry, but we need a we need one of these angles. So if I come back to this picture, it says that the incline is 35 degrees. Yeah. All right, so if this is 35 degrees, these are similar triangles. Um, so what happens is I know that this part here is 90. And if I continue this triangle down, I know that uh, 90 minus 35, the complement of 35, is this angle in here, 55 degrees. And then I know that's complementary, again, with this angle. So we're back to 35 degrees. So I know that this angle right here is 35 degrees. So now I do some trigonometry. I have opposite and hypotenuse. So I say sine of 35 degrees is equal to the opposite, the unknown. So I'll just call that x over 145. So solving for x, I get 145 times sine of 35 degrees and this would be the force required to pull the skier up the hill 145 times sine 
of 35, I get 83.17 pounds of force. That's going to be required to pull them up the hill. So we'll see some more of these inclined problems.